No, not now. That's the premature bowing. <laughs> All right. Bow after three, after three, two, one, bow. Hey. And it was the same bow as well. It's like you're 10 times better than James already. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Mioni. This is where I get to sit down and talk about all sorts of stuff, uh, usually video game related or the channel related. And I've got a very special guest this time. But before we get to that, I just want to sort of preface why we've chosen to have Gridania as a background today. So the game's up to 18 million concurrent registered users, which is amazing. And recently, Shadowbringers has proven itself to be, if not the most, I don't know, best-selling expansion to Final Fantasy XIV so far. So you can imagine that there's lots of new players coming to the game, and they're all creating characters. Now, it's a bit of an awkward time in the world, and my guest is related to that as well. But I thought it'd be interesting to both see the perspective of what people who are more veteran to the game versus new players to the game think about, um, you know, the game as a whole and all the things that Square Enix are doing to promote it. So without further ado, let me introduce Zarathiel, who's a longtime Patreon supporter. It would take me way too much scrolling to figure out when you first started supporting me. Let me be honest, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So how are you? How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. A little worn out, as I'm sure people can imagine. But uh, yeah, I'm hanging in there. So Got you for company, so... Oh, I don't know <laughs> if I'm much company these days, but... So if people don't know Zarafiel, the, the interesting thing about him is that in real life, he works in the NHS in England, so the National Health Service, and does his best in these current situations to uh to put on a brave face even though it's very difficult to do so and um yeah essentially as much as he'd probably cringe me saying it but save lives so yeah <laughs> it, it, the backbone basically of our country is uh is represented purely in these sorts of individuals so uh, i'll thank you for what you're doing that's the first thing i need to say <laughs> thanks <laughs> i suppose thank you just got to keep going right yeah, I mean, the current situation isn't great. There's a lot of things we could talk about, but that would not be really, like, I don't know. I don't think people want to listen to me uh, getting all cranky and uh, <laughs> depressed yeah, over the current situation. It's, not what we're here for, right? <laughs> it's a rough situation, and the reason is mostly because I've been creating videos with the idea recently of trying to cheer up some people like yourself. Um, we've all seen the Twitter feeds of people who work in the NHS and other health industry, inter, in, in, wow, words, institutes all around the world, right, doing their bit to save lives. And some of it's pretty painful to watch, honestly. The shifts, the long shifts, the lack of protective equipment, blah, blah, blah. We could go on for hours. But it's nice <laughs> to be able to think that I would be able to cheer somebody up, even just a small smile. So some people might see a lot of the silly videos I do as unnecessary and completely like, why are you doing this? That's why, um, because of people like Zara. So I wanted to get your perspective on things. I, I, did it bring a smile to you in, in amongst your terrible... <laughs> it certainly did. I'll tell you what, a smile and a laughter means a lot, especially in times like this. And... When, when you're feeling absolutely down and worn out and exhausted and all you want to do is just collapse and sleep, having something that you can just laugh mindlessly at just does wonders for the mood and for your health. It's, it's uh, certainly well appreciated. I mean, certainly had my family wondering what I'm cackling at half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly why content creators need to not think about the majority of people and actually start to create stuff that they want to and, uh, you know, usually you should approach a video and go, I wonder if there's a reason that this video was made. So even if it's a little bit basic, a little bit sort of crass, doesn't really make much sense, it's probably because there's a there's a reason we're making it, and that's one of them. So anyway, let's let's stop talking about that. There's lots of new players <laughs> to the game, right? Lots of new yep. players. You've, you've noticed this as well. We've got lots of new people coming to our FC. Um <sighs> Lots it, of green shoots behind us. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, so you'll see all these people running about doing emotes, dying. See, look, there's a Lalafell that's just been rezzed there. <laughs> people are enjoying the game, mostly because they've got the time to do so at the minute, but also because um, it, it, it is the best game on the market currently in terms of MMORPG, isn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've, collectively, we've played so many MMOs over the years. I think you'll agree that you keep circling back to one, don't you, eventually? Yeah, so I've drifted into other MMOs, but I always somehow find myself drawn back to this one. Is it by uh, any chance the Cat Girls, Zara? I knew this was going to come up. It has to come up. Quick of it, it has to come up. We have to talk about yeah. it. One of, your, yeah. one of your pastimes, isn't it, is to, to catch and tame cat girls. <laughs> what, can, what can I say? I know what I like. <laughs> oh, he knows what he likes. Uh, we're not here to shame, yeah. I guess. No, uh, no. no, I'm open and honest. Uh, yes, I, I like cat girls, but <laughs> I don't know if that makes me a weep or anything like that, but I don't care. Just, just, no, be wary, like just be wary of sitting on the furniture in his house in the 20th ward of the mist. <laughs> That's all I'm saying on Ragnarok. Uh, if you I don't know where visit. these reputations come from. I don't know. <laughs> I, I wonder where, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> so, as you could probably imagine, <laughs> we, we sit up late most nights when you're, you're free off work and um, we just chat about stuff and blow off steam on Discord and it's a public Discord, so any of you could technically come and join in if you wanted to um, just bear in mind some channels obviously you know there's some topics that are a bit not safe for work so if it's if it's day where you are it's likely night where we are if you're an american and we might be talking <laughs> about some things that might be construed as not exactly safe for the workplace and uh, it's all it's all a good jest though that's the, the that's the point as you say good to let off steam at times you just got to, to let loose and open up Absolutely. no point to no point uh, just sitting and bottling everything up all the time. Just got to have a laugh and have fun. Okay. One thing I wanted to know from you, I've got a couple of bullet points. I was like, I really want to ask him these points because I don't think I've asked you. Why did you decide right, to support this channel? I'm curious. I genuinely Ooh. am. <laughs> wow. I'm going, take, um... I'm going to take a nice gulp of tea whilst you <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> I suppose the simplest answer was when I was came first came back to Final Fantasy several years ago, and I don't know. I was just uh, browsing YouTube videos relating to Final Fantasy fourteen, and you, you yours cropped up, and um, I actually enjoyed seeing some of the minions video. So I do partly hold you responsible for my obsession collecting minions. Oh, I'm um, responsible for that. Amazing. <laughs> what was your first video that you watched? I'm curious now. Like what pops Ooh. up. Give me one second. I'm pretty sure. Well, it was it a minion. It was a minion video. Really? Um, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um, but then I immediately started watching loads of your other videos, and I just found it nice to watch, and in many ways enlightening. And some of the things that you talked about with you keeping up to date with the news and everything, even giving me a different perspective of opinions. Cool. I just thought, you know what, this guy deserves some support. Aww, <laughs> how cute. But also very, <laughs> very much appreciated. Very cool, though. I'm always interested because I, I talk to a lot of people, as you'd imagine. And I'm always like, hey, yeah, but what was what was the first video that you watched? And, and I get varying responses. Some people are like, oh, definitely the glamour stuff or fashion report, right? Because that's the thing that circulated the most. Uh, I knew you before fashion report. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that interests me about Fashion Report is, as much as there are many other people that do it as well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm majoritively have, have been the only one on YouTube that's like stuck to it every week for nearly two years now. But for the, what really interests me is like there are, I, I don't own a Facebook account. People have always asked me this and I, I can't stand Facebook. But apparently there's an entire group, right? I, I, I have no idea what the group's called just dedicated to posting, like, reposting my fashion report videos each week. <laughs> and it's all, like, there's apparently, like, um, like, a miniature little thread with people talking in it and, like, sharing their own solutions and stuff in that. But they, like, hotlink it from the YouTube. So, because I've, I've realized that most of the external views on the analytics are from pages like that where it's been embedded. And it, it blows my mind that that's something I, I have absolutely no, like, control over nothing to do with that but it's amazing that there is a, like a subset of uh, of those people that kind of rely on those videos <laughs> for their thing i mean there's other sources right there's, there's yeah. lots of people who post like just infographics and the reddit community and stuff like that which is where i get some of my stuff from 
Uh, for the most part, a lot of the solutions, <laughs> though, that I get are from Twitter based on the Japanese accounts that, I don't know, they seem to be much quicker. Um, they're to the ball quicker with a lot of the solutions. So it's basically a bit of everything. But I like the fact that so far it's sort of it's gone that way. It's, it's really bizarre to me, though. Because I just make videos. I just I'd go, oh, this would be a good idea for a video. <laughs> Hit record. What's up? There's me talking about this, and uh, I press upload. Although the upload speed varies, <laughs> obviously. Uh, yeah, I've got a good voice for it. People like quick, easy visual and something they can listen to. It's nice and simple, and you keep it nice and simple, which I think has a huge impact on it. I I still can't get over that. I personally I hate my voice. Um, it's something I've always not on, not never understood why people oh. have said that I've got a decent voice. It basically this is this to me is what everybody sounds like in my family. We've always sound like this. Um, we we came from the uh, the Midlands before, so there was very thick accents around. But for some reason, like I don't know, like my dad doesn't have this <clears throat> accent. I don't have an accent. It's it's really weird, but I can't. I I think personally, I'm very monotone and kind of boring. Well, I'd say the same about my voice. It's 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 perfectly normal. You don't like the sound of your own voice because you don't hear what everyone else hears until you hear a recording of it. I'm going to watch this video later, and I'm going to probably think, "Oh, is that what I really sound like? I sound terrible." I do so... that every time. Like <laughs> it, it's so weird. I don't understand these people who make videos who are like, oh yeah, I sound good. You know, it's like, <laughs> what? how? How can you have that mentality? But at the same time, good for them, but I can't understand it because I'm always very overly critical. Like, why did I say that? Why did I stumble here? Why did I, you know, stutter in this particular point? Why did I literally forget what I was saying and then start mumbling, you know, and hoping that the other person would fill that gap? Yeah. But it's it's really... It's weird to me, dude. It really is. It still hasn't sunk in. I, I, I feel very undeserving of 50k subs based on what I do, but I'm trying to change it. I'm trying to broaden things. I'm trying to create more stuff. Um, yeah, keep trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, but it's, it's, it's tricky. It's an uphill struggle because you've got a lot of, a lot of critics yeah. out there now. Um. Keep the fact that you, that you keep any videos, the, uh, the bits of the stutters, and sometimes you might struggle to pronounce something or get a word get to find the right word for something just Ooh. i think helps add because it just shows you're more human than some of these other content creators that sometimes just seem so out of reach i mean i remember when i first met you i was like oh god it's me only what do i do what do i do and, uh, <laughs> sure it was in malga's reach and uh i was waving and uh, jumping up and down around you until, oh, <laughs> until you looked I, re at me. I remember so long ago, it was near the Materia Melda, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh yeah, and you were waving, jumping yep. around. I was like, "Who's this idiot?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, still it. Can't get rid of me. Yeah, and then it's like, hi, oh. and I, I think you you just didn't understand the fact that I was replying to you. It was really weird. But yeah, we're, yeah. Not, we're no different. As much as some of us pretend that we're something different, or like a, a number might show next to their like sub count or view count. It doesn't mean anything. They're still the same person, I think, anyway. Some people do put a front on, and it's kind of obvious. But, um, <laughs> and that's my downfall, right? If I if I put on a big front and was, like, lying about... Not necessarily lying, but, like, if I was economic with the truth and, and didn't have opinions on things, which is actually where I started. You know, if you yep. look back at my earlier videos, I was very not opinionated because I knew <laughs> that it was it was kind of dangerous to do so. But then as things went on, it kind of, I, I had to say stuff, and then I start putting my foot in things, and, <laughs> but for the most part, I try to see both points, right, I, I, I try to see yeah. both sides, as much as people dislike that, I mean, I have my own opinion, but everyone has an opinion, um, I mean, it, we don't always agree on things, but we still respect each other's opinions, right, <laughs> and I find a lot of the comments, for the most part, reflect that in a big way people can respect yeah. the idea of you know this is a, a a person that's mature enough to take both the negatives and the positives and put them together and go worry right, okay what are you trying to say here okay this is bad because like especially when it comes to eureka 
I love those discussions because <laughs> it, it's such such polar opposites between people. Like I know for a fact that you in the past have been quite against Eureka, but mostly due to the idea of that time investment, right? Yeah, so, especially my work. Which is one of the things I wanted to talk about is how are you feeling towards the idea of the Bosnian Southern Front? That's something I want to talk to you about because you have a lot of really unusual um, times that you can play based on shift patterns <laughs> yeah. and stuff. So are you happy that Square Enix have essentially made what is what is for you a separate path that you can do regardless of if the content is relevant or not through the quest system? How does that make you feel? Someone it just makes... noted you. <laughs> yes, I just noticed. Uh, uh, must be the it must must be my incredible style. It's the hair. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm actually very happy that they've added from what appears to be an alternate path, especially if the content dies out eventually. Um, I'm still going to attempt the um, oh, my head for names. What did they, what's it called again? Bosnian Southern Front. Southern Front. I'm still going to attempt the Southern Front and that and find bits of time for it. Mm. But it's nice knowing, especially if I can't find a group to play with or in the future if I come back to it, that's definitely I'll be able to take an alternate route to progress the relic weapons. Yeah. I think that's a really key point. Yeah. Exactly. Because as we all know, that. Eureka isn't future proofed. I've talked about this to the point where I'm blue in the face in videos and people yeah. are going to get angry at me for bringing it up again. But I do want to see different people's perspectives. But for the most part, um, as far as we know, it's going to still be like maybe fate based again. There's, there's a lot of similarities that have been drawn from it. We don't know anything set in stone, but I would imagine it'll be more fates, you know, notorious monster stuff. Um, we've got a confirmation of our own like logos action type things, which I was never massively a fan of anyway, because it never really did anything. Excuse yeah. me, but um, oh. it's uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be minions and mounts and stuff. But what what's interesting to me is you're going to miss out presumably on all of that if that is how it is by doing this quest line. So in many ways, there are still going to be time limited mounts, minions, and presumably well maybe titles i don't know from some of the nms so yeah this is why early on i plan to with at least my main weapon to attempt the southern front first and yeah. then spending on how work and life uh, revolves i'll at least have a chance then to do the other story option later assuming they allow us to run in parallel uh, yeah the other thing you've got on your advantage this time is you're in a much bigger fc since um, if people don't know, Zara used to be pretty much. Let's let's be honest. You pretty much used to be the leader of that uh, of Shadows of a Dragon well, to some extent, it, it, right? I became, I became the unofficial leader of those of us that were left. Um, I'd say, but we all we all pretty much came to agreement on things together, and we merged at sort of like the end of Stormblood, and it was probably the best thing, in my opinion, that we ever did. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. A couple of growing pains here and there, new things for everyone, but it's. I think it's definitely worked out. It's been good for everyone. Yeah, as long be as nice you, to have more people to interact with. As long definitely. as we set out like our little individual points of what everybody wanted from it and what we could do and what we wanted to do, I think we've we've managed to make quite a big sort of setup at the minute, and we're still recruiting. So a little bit of a a plug. If you want <laughs> to join an active FC on Ragnarok. Um, I mean, we have people recruiting for a second static group in there, um, and that's a static group primarily with people from the FC and my um, my Whiskers community, so you guys, the viewers and supporters. Um, pretty much everybody can join that. It, there's no limits on that. The only thing we'll ask is obviously, you know, we're here to chill out. It's a nice casual environment. Some things we do together, um, like mount runs and things, but there's nothing like, we're not, we haven't got one specific goal, so to speak. We just want to hang out, chill out in voice chat if we want to, in Discord, and just work on content. I think more recently we had the idea of um, doing all of the dog mounts, right? From Stormblood. We still have those yeah. to do. But we we've, don't been, want to, I think. we've been a bit preoccupied <laughs> with doing with doing um experts and uh, experts. Uh extremes, extremes of the new stuff, like Ruby Weapon. I, I I've done that fight maybe 90 times now dude 
it's ridiculous. But uh, and we've only seen like what <laughs> eleven mounts in total. It's kind yeah. of ridiculous. The the drop rate will probably change eventually. I imagine they've done that before, haven't they? Yeah, that should, that should be in like thing. one of the next couple of patches, maybe. But like I say, it was just an example of stuff that we do do. So we don't do do. <laughs> so we we don't necessarily do that hard content as like a main thingy, but there are a, a bunch of us that will, will help other people through things. But um, yeah, if you want to join Heaven Shadow um, Ragnarok server. Yeah, we do bits of everything. I mean, dabble in PvP, crafting. Mm. Um, some of us are glamour nutters. So. Uh, what are you trying to say? Nothing. <laughs> what are you trying to say about glamour so that's another thing Glam's we'll be doing cool. again soon a lot of people liked the glamour challenge videos we've done like two of them in total so far um people asked me for like who could actually be in those videos essentially it can be pretty much anyone but i'd rather limit it to the people that i talk to more regularly because the setup for those videos takes quite some time and the next one i have planned that zara didn't know about <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've got quite a bit of stuff planned for that, and we're going to have a stop, and we're going to have a lot of recording done live. So that's going to be fun. Oh, Stay tuned for that. Play. Yeah, you're going to love it. There's going to be lots of bleeping out of swearing. It's going to be glorious. I can't wait to do it. But yeah, as long as white's allowed, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be allowed, but will it go with the item? That's the question. Oh, Ooh. challenge. Here's, here's a small hint. It's not white. Oh boy. Oh boy. And I can't buy it. Oh boy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. You're fascinated with pearl white and, and uh, pure, pure white. white. Right? Yeah. He Probably doesn't have the a... the market running. <laughs> you're, you're the only red mage I, I know, sorry, player who has a red mage that I know that's white. Like every single one of your glamours is white. Look, here you go in the background. <laughs> that's his red mage. I said he looks like a chef on a cruise liner. I don't know. <laughs> it's a fancy militaristic magic. What's that? A fancy militaristic what was magic the person. Magic. I, I, I derailed there. I was onto something. But magic person. Oh my god. You're a magic person now. That's your new title. Brilliant. <laughs> oh boy, there we go. <laughs> so another thing I want to ask you, are you looking forward to the Moogle event and what do you want to get from it? Do you know what's mm. even on that event or have you kept it? Yeah, I've, I've had a good look at it. I don't really, I don't need any of the mounts or the minions. Surprise, surprise, because I have issues and I'm you obsessive have, collector. You have Brina. I hate you. Yes, I have Brina. He, he actually <laughs> went and did the anti tower spam. Why? <laughs> because I'm sad and <laughs> I like collecting things. You're um, lucky. I'll probably just look at um, the only thing I'll probably look at is maybe bits of cards, music scores I might be missing. Yeah. And. What about Doggo MG. Necklace? Uh, I've never been one for necklaces. It does look cool, but with the type of glamours I go with, I've never really have exposed neck. You need, anyway. You need you need the Doggo Necklace, I'm just saying. Did you get the Namazu one? <laughs> no, unfortunately, oh. no. I'm afraid to say I didn't. Um, oh, we we so can't be friends anymore. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh. All right, but oh. anyway, so you, you've got to actually you 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 don't know it yet, but you've got to come and help me with um some blue mage runs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the event starts on Monday. I haven't even asked you yet, but you, you've got to like whenever you're free out of your busy schedule, you've got to do some Aurum Vale runs with me on blue mage. Uh, you know me; I'm always happy to help people. Yeah, well, we're getting always you the doggo out. necklace, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so is this the next glamour challenge after this? Do I go a necklace? Oh, I should totally do that, and then I'd force people oh, to actually. Right. I gave him an idea. <laughs> you know what I should do? I should put in the Discord. I should put, hey, if you want to be in the next glamour challenge video, right? Everybody has to have a doggo necklace. Oh, can you imagine how many people would actually take part? That'd be quite interesting, actually. There we go. Mm, it'd be a nightmare of... to actually film that, though. But, yeah. Speaking of videos, I figured out which was the first video I watched, and it was the Fox Fate video. Ah, the Fox Fate. That's yes. what I was. I was looking into the Fox Fate at the time because it was me and one of my friends were desperately trying to spawn it, and we were curious on rewards and spawning. And the uh, was one of the first results I found. Did it help? Ah, uh, well. Oh. I've got the rewards and I'm standing here, so I guess so. 
yes, I was worried then. I was like, uh oh, he's going to say, no, it was a terrible guide and you should think better. <laughs> no. We, no. <laughs> it's, I think it's one of the, the highest viewed videos on, on, on this channel. Um, my highest viewed video is still at 400,000, but that's not on my own channel anymore. So that's, that's <laughs> sad, sad times. But uh, yeah. Lots of fun. I'm I'm looking forward to the Moogle event because it's something to do, oh, right? It's good. For some, I've, 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 I'm keeping myself occupied anyway. So. Yeah, I'm trying to do all of the classes, as you've seen. I've got like four or five left to do. I think it is mostly melee, right? So I'm getting there. I'm trying to get them Not all to eighty. Off. Yeah, it's it's slow, but I'm trying to do them all at the same time though, which I think has been the worst attitude because I want them all to be like, oh, this one hit 73, now these others have to hit 73. And then this one hit 74, now these others have to hit 74. <laughs> it's going to take me forever, but eventually I'm going to have like all of them uh, ding up to 80 all at the same time. That would be really cool. I need to figure oh. a way of making it so that you can get more than, like, more than one class at 80 at the same time. I haven't figured out how to do that. In, how about instead um, just get them as close to it as you can, and then just do the pixie beast tribes, so and then just turn in a quest with each particular class. Um, it may not do it at the same time, but you'll probably get a nice list mm. in one of your feeds. What's it, Commander? And I said just cut it together of like a mob per ding. That would be pretty good, and just have like <laughs> each of the dings back to back. That'd be cool. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. There's, there's not much else to do. I've obviously been trying to get as many items from uh, dungeons as possible to stock up for fashion reports. Because if you don't <laughs> know, fashion report has continued to be a thorn in my side. I've I've just purchased my, uh, I think it's the, is it seventh? I think I've purchased my seventh retainer today because my retainers are full of gear that I can't store <laughs> anywhere else. But it's like, oh, well, I might need this primal necklace. Oh, I might need this uh, ultimate earring, which I had to spend hours running the other day. So I'm trying to go prepared. <laughs> Thankfully, uh, no, they've I'm limited this stuff to mostly like, you know, Stormblood here and there, but mostly it's it's like Heavens wouldn't before. But if they expand this to like Shadowbring and stuff as well, I'm screwed. <laughs> it's going to take forever. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Something to do. <laughs> yeah. So I guess one of the other things I wanted to talk about is what do you want to see next from Final Fantasy XIV? What would Zara's idea of perfect content and not don't go with the lewd option, please? Um, perfect oh, content oh, for the game. And what would he's, you he's like? He's a mind reader, everyone. He's a mind reader. He's, he's, he sensed <laughs> the vibes right there. What would you like to see in like five point four or five point five stuff that we have no idea about? You know, what would be your oh, oh. ideal lineup of content? What, what would you want? Oh wow! Um, wow, <laughs> got me, caught me off, got me off guard there. Okay. I suppose uh, once we've resolved everything uh, on the first and got everything I want back, um, spoilers. Oof. I won't say any more than that. I suppose that's fine. Yeah. Um, progress, so divert attention back to the war with the Galleons. Hmm. Want to find out what's going on in the. Uh, What's going on over there at the moment? Um, Do you think it's going to take all the way to like 5.5 .5 before we, we see that? Because I see 5.3 probably already ending that. Hmm. I, I see us back on this planet right now. Not necessarily yeah, in Gridania, so, but like yeah. on a Garlean front, maybe in like... <laughs> maybe I'd say 5.4 on the front. Uh, 5.3 resolving everything on the first that sits building yeah. up. To some mysterious uh, mm. unexpected fight. Oh yeah, that's gonna be yeah. I've I've already had my little interest as to that, but uh, <laughs> I mean we're not gonna include spoilers in this one or speculation. Yeah. But I, I suppose I suppose I can speculate as to what the boss might be because we don't know, and I'm not gonna mention why I think that. But my point is, I think that the boss will be Zeramus or Zemus, depending. Ooh. Now, there's reasons for that. If you look into, well, A. Zemus <laughs> from Final Fantasy IV, obviously to do with the moon, yeah. and, you'll know, and you'll know why I chose that. If you, oh uh, yeah, that. I remember that conversation. And then there's the idea of Zeramus from Twelve because that that design and also 
what if you read the law behind Zeramus, the little law text box that you when you've uh, in your bestiary, it talks about scions in there of light and of dark. So there's a there's a balance thing written in there. So we won't we won't go down that route too much further. But I think yeah. that's going to be the boss. Do you have a <laughs> do you have a similar sort of prediction as to what you think might be that last boss? Of that I thing? have a very different sort of prediction but again i can't name the name spoilers for people but but like it's the the actual like boss not necessarily the person who might turn into a boss ah fair enough um <laughs> honestly um i couldn't forget i guess uh, i guess guess outside of characters it is tricky, it is I have, tricky. I have, my gut tells me of two possible characters that are going to be for the okay. boss, but as for what the boss could actually be, I it'd be too obvious to think it was certain characters, though, that I know that you're thinking of. Because uh, uh, Yoshi P said it's not going to be something that you immediately think of. So, well, I mean, but you said that before. Hilda, 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 Hilda Brand boss. Hilda Brand is the last boss. <laughs> People have been like, where's my Hilda Brand? There wasn't one in a 0.5 patch. Go exactly. on. Exactly. What's going on here, Square Enix? This isn't on. No I one will expect that. No my, one will expect that. I want my new dance emote. I want Greg to be back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and he's just like, just like a, a like a cowled Asian appears and then goes, <laughs> and then the music changes from like this really dramatic music to like the Hildebrand theme. And it's like, do, 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 do. And then he pulls off a mask and he's like, missed me? <laughs> And it's like Greg and Hilda uh, together. That'd be, that'd be a good troll, that would be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'd, we'd have to be in some weird alternate dimension for that to happen, but that would be so cool. <laughs> and people would just be like, well, we did ask for Hildebrand. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I, lo I love Hildebrand. Like, Hildebrand is amazing. I'm one of these people who was like, please add more dungeons, please, please add more dungeons. And when yeah. they finally did, in Stormblood that we can't talk about, Law specifics. I love, I mean, obviously, I can't spoil it, but I did love that fight. It was it so was a good. good. It was it's, good. It, was, it really made me smile. It, it was, was like it was wow. equal to the original trials that they put in for for Ultros, etc. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it was right there, hit the nail on the <laughs> head. It was perfect. Beautiful arena too. Mm, yes, one of my I've, favorites. I've taken quite a lot of Gpo's pictures in there. Um, another one of my little hobbies that takes too much time. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're left with pictures that you're like where can i post this it's like um i don't know maybe we could use this as a thumbnail and that's usually what happens like a lot of my older thumbnails are just gpos pictures that i put writing over because <laughs> they just look nice and i'm like okay i'm gonna use that for that and then people are like why is that not related to the thing he's talking about and i'm like ah yeah that's probably a good point maybe maybe i should have actually not used that thumbnail but yeah random gpos video mm. just a collection of your favorite gpo shots oh you know the new like saving the camera settings and lighting settings that is so good i've used that for you know like all the pans that i do for showing off gear a lot of people somebody said where are you filming this because it's amazing are you using third party software i was like no i'm actually amazed <laughs> to say i'm not actually using any third party software in any of my videos and the beauty of it is they added those like um, those white screens, the curved screens. Ah, uh, yes, I've seen. They're uh, your setup. Yeah, and it looks, it looks weird with normal lighting, but if you go into G-Pose, oh my goodness, you turn the light to a sp certain setting, uh, certain angles, you have this seamless white arena that you can just pan around, and you can light your character independently of that, and then you save the settings, and no matter what glamour or object you're loading into it, you can do like a freeform pan with your controller, and it's so smooth and it looks beautiful but yeah a lot of people i was i was actually happy when somebody was like oh what software are you using it's like final fantasy 14 <laughs> it's actually at the point where i don't need to use anything external and i want more features uh, to enable time and day transition that's one thing i've want more than anything else currently we have a stop time feature which is really good and useful for when you're doing, you know, if I was doing a video like this, but I didn't want time to advance, but it is currently in the game, right? <laughs> but what I want is a is this little slider where you can slide day to night, like you can with some third party software that I may have looked at, you know? <laughs> it's 
it's something it that's so, so easy to do. Yeah, it, it's client side. It doesn't affect anything. So it would be simple to just have a little slider button. Do I want it to be night? Do I want it to be day? And you, the other thing I really want is the ability to actually uh, press like play on it and then fast forward. That way I could do sped up time lapses, slow the, the world down uh, so we can get star pictures, stuff like that. At the minute, the only way I can do a time lapse is just putting a camera in a place and pointing it at the sky or a sunset. And it takes me real time, like uh, up to five hours of recording. And then you squish that down into like 20 minutes. And that's what I do for those videos. But to have a feature where I could just determine how fast I want time to progress, it would just be amazing for scenery shots. But uh, that's what I want from GPOS. Is there anything <laughs> that you want from GPOS? Because um, I know you love it. I know you uh, do. Yeah. I've not had much time to dabble in it recently. But yeah, I do love uh, messing around with GPOS. Definitely what you said. Um, controlling the day, day, night and everything. Control influencing weather uh yeah uh, specific to the zones um i wouldn't ask for like gloom in the middle of here in gridania for example that would be cool but, though. Um, <laughs> it would be cool but yeah influencing weather effects and just being able just to, <laughs> being able to manipulate various effects more easily would be nice maybe like a blacklist as well so that if you put it on like if it was like progressing, but you could blacklist rain or fog. Yeah. That would, that would oh yeah. Good. That's a good idea. The ability, because while you're in G pose, if you're getting trying to get a specific shot with certain people, and especially mm. in a crowded area, the ability to filter out to filter in people that you want in your G pose and maybe oh, filter out. Oh, that would be others. so good. So you could be, be like, so you just click on someone, regardless of if they're on your friends list or anything or an NPC, and you're like, this specific guy, delete. You know, yeah. and then and then another thing that I've wanted, and I think a lot of people have recommended this before. I'm sure people will back me up in the comments. Is the idea of that when you're in G pose, there's no reason why they haven't allowed for a limited right. You could have a barrier around a certain radius, but a limited no clip system where you could literally detach the camera from your character and fly around a bit, because that would be amazing oh, for mission animation. So but, small, simpler to get certain angles. Right. So you could have a, a literal lift your camera up much higher with free cam. I'm not asking for clipping, right? I'm yeah. asking just for the ability to, because you, if you play any, um, any sports games or any, uh, racing games, right? There's photo modes in these games or even like Red Dead and you can detach the camera completely from focus on your character and like move the camera to different angles that where maybe you want your character in the bottom right of that scene. So the only current way of doing that is actually to plug in a controller and then have, because the controller has more functionality in GPOS than a keyboard does. I don't know if people realize that, but like you can change where your character is on screen with, with the controller, but you can't with keyboard and mouse. There's no settings built for it. So it's always going to be in the center. Um, but to have like a free cam, so we could lift the camera up like where we're stood now and have an overhead shot, but wasn't necessarily looking at us as a focus. But like you just see the ears and then what's past that, that's not possible. And I think that's something that they could do. And the reason I say, why don't they just put it in with a limited barrier system? So you go, as soon as you press G pose button, a barrier is formed around your area of what you can affect, right? Yeah. And that includes how far your camera can stray from you. I'd be fine with this. It'd be great for trail cameras. It'd be great for machine animation. It would be great for uh, screenshot contests. You name it, the, the use of that would be amazing. And it's something that's missing from this photo mode that's in any other game. There's a huge G-Pose community out there which would um, love a lot of these extra fits, ideas and features. It's There's a lot of different things that's been introduced into the game, which is amazing and covering a lot of various communities. But I'd say, yeah, the G-Pose one could do with a little more love yeah. in that sense. Because uh, you go onto uh, Twitter and everything, and there's that many GPOs channels, huge ones at that. Um, it's an amazing huge, shot. It's a huge component of our of yeah. our greater community is the people yeah. that like to take pictures. And when when a game is as beautiful as this, then you really want to. Oh, so, there's some amazing areas in this game. Somebody said to me in a comment section the other day, and I, I don't want to mention their name, but they said this game looks incredibly dated and crap, and they need to rework the engine. 
me personally, maybe it's just me with my rose tinted glasses or something, but this this game is on par with everything else I've played. It might not be black desert levels, but that's not possible um, to do that without other limitations like black desert doesn't have the same sort of it doesn't have instance raids dungeons that sort of stuff it yeah. doesn't have an instancing system it's big one uh, one big world and runs on a completely different engine and it looks beautiful for pictures but has nothing else with it whereas this game has pretty much everything that i want from it pve pvp and i mean i, I dare to say pvp because i don't really <laughs> do much of it but what i do i enjoy right what little i do i just think the queues are crap but it has everything across that that I enjoy. So the natural evolution of G-Pose is the only thing that's holding it back, I think. I'd say this game's got, while, um, while it may not have the latest and greatest and fancy graphics and engines, it's got its own charm and its own style, which is unique to it. You can't, yeah. if you changed it, it wouldn't be the same. And the core game for me, it's still mainly about the story and everything you can do with it. I mean, the graphics, as far as I'm concerned, are still great compared to some things you see out there. Yeah. It's high, high, held the test of time. There's plenty of shading techniques that you can employ as a, as a consumer as well that doesn't violate terms of service. Like he's already talked before. There are some things, I mean, that's another topic entirely, but reshade is allowed, <laughs> right? Uh, Third-party stuff like NVIDIA's Ansel which I use all the time, is allowed, right? It's it's just an overlay of filters. It, it just basically puts um, bloom effects or makes it more cartoony for certain people or brightens the game up in places where it looks washed out. Those are perfectly legal ways of enhancing the game. Um, so th there is that as well. But at the same time, the base game, I mean, I record 90% of my stuff without any of those filters on because it just looks that good. It's just time of day place you know if it's foggy somewhere i'll be literally waiting six hours probably before I, <laughs> before i can actually get a decent shot but i think for the most part it is a beautifully uh, well done game and the more recent content is a lot more polished i think than a lot of the yeah, other stuff definitely. i mean they recently there's a lot of details if you know where to look there's a lot yeah. of attention to detail in obscure areas the interesting thing to me is you play a lot of mmos Okay, or RPGs in general, even Square Enix stuff, okay? And you, say for instance, you visit a woodcutter's hut in the middle of a forest. That woodcutter, woodcutter's hut will have the same three logs outside of it, right? And <laughs> the same preset stuff inside. In this game, those same three logs aren't there. They're all different every single time. Inside the... the, the I'm trying to say basically everywhere feels so unique. There's very yeah. little reuse. And if there is reuse, there's actually quite interesting alterations to it depending on what that particular npc is doing i've not seen that really that much elsewhere a lot of the time developers just put stuff you know they they have basically scatter brushes like in world of warcraft where they have it literally is a brush setting for a pile of cups on the floor the same pile of cups in the same position is just basically pasted across the entire map the same piece of terrain with the same cracks and it is pasted everywhere now for the most part we have the same sort of stuff but when it comes to set pieces, it, it blows my mind. Every time there's a new zone, there's stuff you've never seen before. Or if there is stuff that was there before, it's a new iteration of it. Look at this guy, this tank. He's checking yeah, this out. Was... <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't think I've seen that elsewhere, personally. But uh, yeah, I don't know really how I got onto this topic, but I'm, I'm, enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying seeing what we get next. And... People asking for a graphical update for the game, or I, I don't think that's very realistic at this point. I don't think it's the in the interest. In it, yeah, yeah you've got think... to also think about both. It's cross-platform. You've got to think about the capabilities of both platforms. And not everyone's PC is going to be high-end. Some people's laptops won't um, only just run the game on minimum graphics. Can you imagine what would happen if they upgraded everything? It would mm. isolate certain people. I mean, well, we... That's just looking at one side of it. We should be getting a PS5 version of this game. People are like, oh, are we going to get a PS5 version? Are we going to get a PS5 version? I'm like, well, yeah, of course we are. It, it's guaranteed because this game's going nowhere within at least the next, what, let's say five years, I think. Yeah, I'd say. Something like five that. Years. And, you know, before content starts to really get slowly developed, I think. But then I might be wrong. It could be up to eight years. We don't know because Final Fantasy XI is getting a massive resurgence. I don't know if you've seen... 
Yeah, I caught a glimpse of that somewhere. I mean, I don't mm. know anything about it, but I did hear there's been on. Um, oh, it's supposed to be like a game, mobile. So yeah, yeah. Brian, Brian covered it. That Essentially, it, yeah. yeah, a lot of that is supposed to be legit, like screens from this. I mean, they're supposed to be leaked, but they don't look very leaked to me. Of screens from the mobile port of, of Final Fantasy XI, but it's not a port, it's like a complete remake. But I've seen all of these similar pictures with a similar sort of style um, a couple of years ago when they, when they first unveiled the idea. But we've not heard anything for like, I don't know, it must be five years now. So if it is a thing, then I just hope that they have a PC client of it as well. Uh, because if I have to use like blue stacks or something to load up a phone app on my computer, I'm not going to be that impressed. Because if you're going to bring out a new version of Eleven, bring it out on the platforms where the where the game was originally made, not just. Yeah. I mean, it, it's impossible to dig out a PlayStation Two, right? But PC, it needs updating. Get rid of Play Online, make it playable. We'll have a blast. I can't wait. You know, if they do that, if it's on a mobile phone, I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to play it, dude. I hate mobile gaming, especially an MMO. <laughs> I can't imagine yeah. playing an MMO on your phone. It would just, it would drive me insane. I've never tried it myself. I do odd little games on my mobile, but that's only to pass the time on my breaks more than anything. Yeah, unless you could like plug a controller into your phone or something. <laughs> Maybe like Bluetooth. Oh, or something. <laughs> yeah, you might as well have it on console. And that's, that's the market, right? That's where it's going. But if they're developing stuff for 11, I don't see this game having any like proper i'm not going to use the word content drought because that happens all the time but development to the point where they're working on another mmo and um, and people ask me why are you why are you so focused on 14 aren't you afraid that it's going to go away one day but i'm like it's square enix they have a reputation of making a new thing when the old thing gets old yeah next time jump to the next mmo and you can Absolutely. still cover any updates in 14 as long as it has cat girls or at least a cat Girl, like headband, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Keep the cat girls. I'll be happy too. Oh dear. <laughs> but yeah, I think we've we've wobbled on for enough now, so we're gonna wrap it up. But I want to just thank you for coming on, Zara. It's it's very free form. I didn't really have much written that I wanted to talk to you about, but I just wanted you on because I thought you would be a really really nice um person to talk to, and it's it's something different. Thank and you. I really do appreciate. I know a lot of people say this. I do appreciate, not necessarily, I'm not going to be like clapping for you, that sort of thing, <laughs> but I'm going to say thank you, right, for doing what you do and putting yourself at risk for everybody else in the comment section, okay? Because yeah. there's a lot of people that don't get the credit they deserve and the governments in certain countries, including our own, are not doing enough. I think it's fair to say to support you. Uh, either you don't want me to start on that kind of worms. Trust me, you'll add an extra hour to this video. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for what you do. And uh, it is very much appreciated. And thank you for your support over the years. God, you're crazy. Oh. <laughs> Took it this time to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, just, just one of the many generous people that support the channel. For I absolutely have no idea why. They love this stuff. I don't know why, but I, I I love making it. So if you love enjoying it, I'll keep making it. You guys out there. So thank you. Is there anything else you want to say? Anybody you want to talk to? Anybody like shout outs or anything? Uh, like um, well, <laughs> all my friends and family. I already know that I, get, I like them all. But and before before you end the video, I distinctly remember you saying make your comment to James in your last video about a certain emote. So just to troll troll you, I'm going to do it now. Oh no! Let's see how blinding it really is. Here we go. Oh, that's with spell effects turned down as well. Oh jeez. What can I say? I've got more sense than money. So leave a comment below if you think Zarafiel is overcompensating for something with his emote. I certainly am. I'll, I'll admit it. I certainly am compensating. <laughs> oh dear. You're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to admit that, but I guess you owned it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's go back to, to... I need another cup. Thank you all kindly for watching wherever you are. We're going to do a timed bow again if we can actually get that to, to work. So you want to do a bow with me. You want to say bye to people. Bye to people. Bye to people. Wow. All right. Bow, please. In three, two, then. That was that was your cue to bow. You failed. There's not you three, two, then. <sighs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>
Uh, hopeless. <laughs> yep, I'm completely hopeless. Take this. Just showing off your statues again. Yeah. Your, your emotes that come with a free statue. Jeez. Awesome. <laughs>